So hey everyone, this is Romy here. This is the review for the next 15, season 1, episode 3. Boo-hoo kitty! <laughs> Boo-hoo kitty, okay, that was a playoff of Empire. Alright, we get it. So, the episode actually starts off with uh, Carlos King meeting up with Claudia Jordan. And she essentially, he's just like, alright Claudia, what happened? What happened? This doesn't make any sense. I leave, I leave for one day! One day, and then things go and flip the script. How are you going to go and tell me that uh, New York now has an issue with you, and you now have an issue with her, and you're supposed to be an EP. You're not showing me you have that uh, executive producer skills. You're supposed to be able to handle situations like this. How am I supposed to trust you with running a whole TV show, a um, talk show, if you can't handle one person? And I'm like, okay, that's a valid point, but... Are you really taking any of this seriously? Come on now. Everyone's thinking that they're EPs in their minds. So let's stop this. Let's stop faking the funk. But he was just like, you know what? New York sent me a text message. No, she uh, was like, New York sent me a text message and was like, girl is such a B, such a this and that. And he was like, well, you know, New York says she actually likes you and she wants to continue to work with you. And I understand why New York's acting the way she's reacting. And I'll tell you why a little bit later. But there's definitely a method, a method to her madness. And it's not just for ratings. It's not. So they go in and, you know, everyone's there except for New York. So you have Jennifer there, Benzino's there, uh, Laura's there, along with Claudia. And so they're having a brainstorming session as far as... Uh, as far as uh, what's going to go on with their show. And he, she, Claudia goes and I'm like, this is a business meeting. This is a business meeting. You do not bring that stuff up with the uh, business meeting. You talk about it for two seconds and then you move on. Because production will only film for so long. So come on. We're wasting time here. I know this is for dramatics. So let's stop it. So Claudia goes and says how New York called her. Um, sent Carlos a text and was like, oh, she's such a B. And even though uh, New York later texted her, it's like, girl, I love you. So it's like, girl, this chick's man manic depressant. Now, here's the thing. Claudia goes and she, conf she conferences in Karamo. And Karamo's just like, you know what? That chick was crazy. She was definitely on some Jekyll and Hyde type of mess. And I just can't have it. And Laura's just like, you know what? I'm actually trying to improve my brand. I'm trying to do better. So how the hell am I going to go and do that if you're going and um, messing things up? You, as in New York, Tiffany, you're doing too much. Jennifer feels the same way. Jennifer's just like, do I really need to be here? I have my own thing going on. So do I really need to be here? Yeah, you definitely need to be here. Because Black Holly, I don't even know what that is. So that speaks for itself. Anyway, so we move on from that point. And um, Claudia's just like, you know what? Homework, everyone. Homework. Here's what I need you guys to do. You need to come and get yourself together. Figure out what you want for the show as far as how you want it to go. And uh, what your role is supposed to be. And we actually know what New York's role is supposed to be. And she was good. She was going to be like that everyday person out on the streets talking to the people. And they were like, yeah, that actually sounds really good. She has the personality for it. It's like, yeah. But then she freaked out about it. I'm like, it doesn't make any sense. I'm like, look, New York is very insecure. New York is very insecure right now. And she has, she feels like she has a lot to prove. So anyway, they go and they set up. By the way, I know a lot of people don't like the fact that they're seeing all these behind the scenes stuff and them actually setting things up and how they actually start a scene, which is essentially, okay, you're going to be talking about this. You're going to be walking up the stairs. You're going to be meeting with this guy and then we're going to go and then boop, 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 go. That's how reality shows actually are. So they are scripted in the sense that they already know what they're going to be talking about and the purpose for them to be there. But how they react is up to them. That's the reality factor. So after that, we go and again, we have Laura. She's seeing this anger management coach because it's part of the court order for her and her ex to go and see this coach. And at first I was like, wait, her ex is going to be there? No, of course he wasn't there. And so she was just talking about the relationship was crazy. It did get physical on both ends. But she's like, I'm a fighter. So there was definitely no, no one was beating on me. But there was definitely some tussling and some hands being thrown. I was like, 
And this is supposed to be normal? Are you kidding me? And so she was saying how, you know, he's been trying to control me and of course piss me off and do all these things by waving the money. You know, he takes away the car, he takes away the house and sees me react. And so it's like, wait a minute, you're trying to tell me that I'm not supposed to feel a certain way about that and that that's, uh, I have control of my emotions and essentially whatever I allow is what he's going to continue to do. No. If he's on some BS, then I have the right to be like he's on some BS and react accordingly. But the angry management coach, I was like, wait a minute. This guy, something seems off with him. But then I realized, no, he's for anger management. He's not for, say, uh, psychi psychiatrist, psychologist, whatever it is. And um, so his purpose is to try and get your emotions in check and to figure out the underlying issue of why you're acting out. That's what his goal is. It's not to go and baby you and just to listen to your problems. I think that's what Laura thought it was going to be. No. This guy had some attitude. And then she was talking about he had some a had an accent. I'm like, wait a minute. You have a slight accent as well. It's very subtle, but it's there. So, I understand his voice in general might be a little bit thicker. But... I'm like, I don't hear an accent. I understand everything he's saying. Stop playing. Stop playing. And I'm like, Laura, I really like you. But some of the things that you've been saying come off as borderline ignorant. I know it's not coming from a bad place. It's just, I don't know. I have to watch out for you. But other than that, I think you're very cool. Of course, beautiful. Um, so we go off to Jennifer, another favorite of mine. Appearance. Yes, personality, I'm glad to see. See, I don't have a problem with her being, I guess you can call it, sassy or uh, being a little bougie. There's nothing wrong with being a little bougie. Well, to me, there's nothing wrong with being a little bougie. Uh, but, because I, I, I can appreciate, I can appreciate that to a certain extent. So, we have no issues here. What I do have an issue with is Jennifer has this... Uh, she takes it to the next level. But she's meeting up with Benzino. And Benzino's just trying to think. He's like, yo, girl, what what are we trying to do here? What are we trying to do here? What are we really trying to do here? Jennifer's like, well, you know what? Uh, I actually, I want to do a song. I want to do music. And I'm like, Jennifer, can you sing? That is what I would normally think. But it's like, this is 2016. You don't have to sing. You can create a hit song without being able to sing. So it's like, is your voice appealing on the track? Is it, can it be manipulated to the point where it would be good enough to uh, get people excited? Are is your voice interesting enough so that we can do repetition, the hook? That's what I'm thinking about. And so, Benzino's just like, go and sing for me. She's like, oh, uh, uh. Wait, well, you know, I can't just do it on the spot. I need to do the vocal warm-ups and, you know, the tea with honey. I'm like, oh, gosh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Come on, Jennifer. Come on, Jennifer. Prove the haters. Prove the haters. But speaking of haters, she has an issue with Claudia. And she's telling Benzino about it. He's like, is this high school? They're being petty. And this is potentially over some guy. Are you, are you ladies serious? You're supposed to be grown women and you're being petty over something like this? Get over it. Get over it. Get over it. So Karamo meets up with Laura and Laura is going to find a new car. And Karamo's just like, you know, wouldn't your money be better utilized with the lawyers instead of going and paying for a car? And she was like, look, I know my ex put out this misconception of the fact that I was frivolous with my money or that I was having financial issues. But trust and believe I was never uh, broke or hurt for money. I'm like... Okay, that's the story we're going to go with? Uh, okay. Okay, yeah. If we're saying that because you've always had money coming in from him, I'm not really sure what business you had to bring in money yourself because we know reality TV doesn't pay that much. And endorsements and all that stuff, yes. But just as far as reality TV off the bat, no. Nope. Nope. Not unless you're on like Housewives or something. And you're one of the main, main characters. Like a Candy or a Nini. So anyway, uh, Laura was just saying how she really appreciated the fact that she brought out Karamo because he was like, you know, I'm sure he has great taste and all that. She was like, oh, screw that. You know, he's gay and I'm sure that 
having him around, it would be fierce, and he would make sure that I would uh, choose the best car for me, and that it would be hot and popping. And it was nice to see Karamo and Laura, you know, have a real moment. And Laura was just like, you know, Karamo was like, wait, you have a 2015, so why do you want a 2016? She was like, you know, new year, new me type of thing. I'm really trying to move on to the next, and I, he took the car from me, took the house. So, fresh house, fresh car, new me, I'm on my independence-ish, and no one can take that away from me. And Karamo was like, testify, testify. <laughs> so, again, that was fun to see. Karamo's definitely one of those, uh, he's mature enough to where he can weave his way through all of the uh, drama and stay relatively even kill. But, I also see him kind of riding the fence. But here's the thing, it's not like he has a true friendship friendship with any of them. So he's not being disloyal if he's making fun of or laughing at Claudia in one moment and then laughing at Jennifer in the other. He's really not. But shout out to Laura, I mean her negotiation skills. I See, here's the thing, and I'm not generalizing, but this is a positive for you ladies out there. I will say this, when it comes to negotiating, I personally feel like women... Uh, naturally are better at okay it's like I'm not just going to take this at face value you're not just going to go and play me like that I'll phrase it in that manner aside from of course businessmen and all of that but I feel like in general women because you may have to have taken charge in certain areas of your life at a younger age when it comes to like negotiations and all of that and I'm just I'm not just generalizing with just shopping in general but even with big purchase items it's like you know what I'm gonna have to prey on that so the original price was what around 97 98 uh 98k and Laura got it down to 93.5 and I'm like you know what that's boss. That's boss. And then I was thinking, all right, all right, let's think about this. This guy is on TV. He's going to get some free publicity from this. So I'm sure he factored all that in there. Come on now. We know how this works. So Benzino, he goes and he makes dinner for Althea. And I'm like, wait a minute. Althea can't be there. And I was like, no, Althea wasn't there. Althea was at home in Atlanta. And she was just like, how the hell are you going to go and cook me dinner and I can't even enjoy it? How dare you? I'm pregnant with your seed and you're kind of taunting me like this. And so then it was also brought up the fact that New York seemed to be getting really comfortable with Benzino. Because as we know, New York does like Benzino a little bit too much, even though she knows that he's married. And so, she's just like, look, you need to watch that trial. Of, I, don't make me come down there type of thing. Don't make me come down there. So, after that, you have uh, New York is actually hosting a, I believe, what is it, a drag show? I guess that's what it is. And so, uh... New York's in her interesting getup. That's what I was wondering. Why the hell she looked like that? But now I get it. She definitely dressed apart. So she looks great by that uh, definition standard. Carlos was like, you know what? This chick didn't uh, remember the fact that she told me about this show. So not only am I uh, going to show up and get my life by the performances, I'm also going to go and get her on camera to get this money. To get this money. So, he talks to New York, and I'm like, oh gosh, New York, I love you, but this is, this is looking a little manic, depressing, bipolar-ish. Come on now, New York, come on now. Because New York goes from, you know what, forget that B, forget that B as far as Claudia. I don't want to deal with her, I don't want to deal with any of them. I want to be the EP. She said I can't be the EP. Of course she's not going to make me the EP, and I'm not going to go to any of her events. She went from that to, I really do love her. I love her, and I'm down for her. And you know, I'm down for you, and I love you, and Karamo, Karam, and all of them. I'm cool with all of them, and I want to do the show. It's like, as long as you make me the EP, and as long as I don't have to do anything, I'm good. Where they do that at? First of all, the entertainment field is not a field where you, well, that's not true, depending on what you are, what you do. But in general, the entertainment field is a situation where you're more so doing a lot of stuff for free. And a lot of 
not guarantee the work as far as the pay is concerned or even the work. So I thought it was interesting that New York was like, you know, I want an EP credit, executive producer credit, and I don't want to put in the physical work. I'm like, okay, we can, we can give you that title with stipulations. How about that? We can give you that title with stipulations. That's what I would say. So again, throughout this whole episode, it looks like throughout this whole season, uh, Claudia and Jennifer are going to be throwing digs at each other. And I'm really tired of it. I'm really tired of them just, Jennifer constantly insinuating that Claudia is a hoe and that she's a slut and that, you know, if all those guys are saying it, then just admit it. Your wholeness will not be deleted. This is not some Drea-ish. Your wholeness cannot be deleted. So you need to just go and, uh... Expose yourself. Be real. People will respect the real. Even if you're a hoe, as long as you're a real hoe, they'll respect it. And my whole thing is, Jennifer, c come here, Jennifer. I really like you. I really like you. Why are you, you know, you're not really representing yourself in the best way because it's like you're, Neither is Claudia. So I'm not even going to get on Jennifer. Both of them, this show isn't helping them. This show really isn't helping either of them. And so then when Claudia talked about how she was actually, she's been called a hoe ever since she was 12. And then she was raped uh, by age 17. She was actually a virgin at the time. And she was like, you know, I didn't have a choice. This person held me down and raped me. And then there was this huge shame because it was like, oh, well, you're a hoe even though you never had sex before, and so of course you were got raped. Of course you did. And I was just like, damn, this poor baby. This poor baby. Because now this makes sense, because we were trying to figure out what is the stigma with Claudia, because Claudia was like, yeah, so if I'm around all these guys, then of course that's why people are going to call me a hoe uh, when I grow up and all of this. It's like, yeah, I've been with this guy, I've been with this guy, I've been with this guy. Not necessarily slept with all of them, but I've been around a lot of guys, yeah, and. And so then that all magically would uh, make me a hoe. And it's like, you know, part of the so-called hoeness is because of what happened to me when I was early. It was like, okay, I do understand where you're coming from, but you might have want to left that last part out because that being left for interpretation is very dangerous. So, you have Karama and... uh Oh, hell no. You have Karama, you have Jennifer talking right now, and it's really weird because it's really weird because I feel like I just saw Jason Lee. You know, the guy from Love and Hip Hop who threw the drink in uh, What's Her Face's Face? Yeah, so Jason Lee was there, and also Bobby Valentino. I'm like, okay, Claudia must have called him. Or maybe Carlos King did, because I'm like, Bobby, is it really that bad that you need to go and be out there? I know showing support is one thing, but I'm like, they didn't even give you a credit for being there. You were there in the background. They made sure not to tape your butt. I'm like, okay. Okay. So everyone's coming together, and they're all in agreement that it's like, this is some ratchet, ratchet foolishness. How the hell are we out here on in someone's parking lot? eating hot dogs and hamburgers and it's like lord jesus who is this popping up in comes tiffany in comes tiffany and tiffany's like oh i love you i love you i love you i love you and they're all like all right why is she so happy why is she so happy and karama's just like all right all right siri s voice let's get this together how long do you think it's gonna take before she blows up how long do you think it's going to take before she blows up? And before she does that, she was hitting on Benzino. So thankfully, Benzino distracted her for a moment. Now, it didn't take long for her to blow up as soon as Claudia came. Because she was like, oh, this ghetto fabulous ch Oh, I'm tired of this chick. And so then, the reason why New York actually blew up was when they had the conversation about the EP credit. New York was upset because it's like, how dare you? I want to be an EP. No, I don't want to do anything. I don't know. I don't want to do anything. And Benzino's trying to intervene. He's like, yo, what's going on? What's going on? She's like, look, and I know you guys don't like me. You don't want me to be a part of this. And I don't want to mess up. This is so different than what I'm used to. You know, if this was 
Flavor of Love or a different reality show, you guys would, could just vote me off. I know that's what you really want to do. And I was like, okay, I understand where she's coming from now. She is so terrified that going into this new venture, taking on a lot more responsibility than what she's used to, that she'll crash and burn and fail, that she'd rather go and blow up and cause the whole thing to um, not happen before she could potentially ruin it. I'm like, damn, this is sad because, oh Lord, she, she needs help. They, she really needs some help. Someone go and help the poor thing. Someone go and help her. Karamo's just like, you know what? Yeah, I'm tired of your ass. I wouldn't mind if you were to go and just leave and uh, disappear right now. She was like, oh, so that's how you really feel? So like, yeah, of course that's how I really feel. Go! She's like, oh, I'm tired of that. Uh, like, oh, Lord Jesus, fix it, Jesus, fix it, Jesus, fix it, Jesus. Amen. Please like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think. This was complete and utter foolery, and I will be watching it next week as usual.